Hi there, I'm Alisa Libo, professor of screen media at University of Sussex and co-curator of the program at the Barbican called Interstate. So I'm here with Jonathan Cowett, the maker of Tarnation and other films and many other things, I believe also now a podcast project, which hopefully we'll get to talk about. Jonathan and I are going to chat for about 15, 20 minutes and then we're gonna open up to any questions if um, people are uh, itching to ask Jonathan something or have been itching to ask him something about his film Tarnation for the last, how long has it been, Jonathan? 17 been years. 16, almost 17 years. Yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, no, and I, you know, I, I also made a first person film a long time ago and I teach first person film and I've written about very personal films. And I always say to people, don't make a first person film if you're not willing to see that film in 20 years. See yourself in that film in 20 years. So how is it to see yourself oh my 17 gosh. years later? 17 years later. Um, it's it's really, it's strange and sort of the the post YouTube era that we that we live in where, you know, everyone, um, everyone oh, hey, knows, you know, sort of like knows metadata about you that you wouldn't have, a, Otherwise, you know, the cross referencing is, has really been interesting. Um, but I'm 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 sort of coming to a place now. You know, I, I sort of put filmmaking just just for a whole array of reasons, but mostly personal reasons. Just kind of having to be here for my family to to the magnitude that I, I wasn't really anticipating that I would need to have been you know needed to have been there for them um, after the film. Uh, had had been made, but I, I sort of, I paused. I was paused from filmmaking for a long time, and um, just sort of like it, you know, came back to you know realizing that it's it's pretty much all I can do, and I'm sort of watermarked to be a filmmaker, even if I didn't want to. Um, if that makes any sense, particularly having put out something so personal, because you kind of you sort of serve. When you when you make a film like this, you you kind of you you live in this kind of microcosm bubble that uh, you can sort of only uh, you can or you can I, I feel like I can only communicate with uh, sort of other crazy artists like myself or uh, other filmmakers or you know uh, it's 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 a, it's definitely a microcosm um, scenario that I've that I've uh, that I've created for myself, but um, but I, I wanted to step away from making personal documentaries, particularly because of the last film I made, which is a whole, probably a whole podcast discussion in itself. Um, you know, I, I just got very disconcerted about, about wanting to do it anymore. So I, now I've kind of like gotten my mojo back and I'm, you know, a lot of the responsibilities that I'd had in the past were starting to subside greatly over the last year. And now I've finally gotten to a place to where I'm comfortable enough and I have the headspace enough to um, to put out new work. And so I'm, I'm radically seg segueing out of uh, uh, making personal documentaries any longer. I can, I can uh, appreciate <laughs> the desire to do that. And microcosm is a really good term actually, because it's a kind of whole ecosystem and a very yeah. interior, internal ecosystem. It's a world, actually, that you that you create. Certainly created in in Tarnation. I mean, it's 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 such a personal film about such a specific thing, but it's a universe that you created there. For sure, and it's it's a universe that it's it's very it's it's a very sort of encoded thing. When I talk about it, when people ask me about it, um, it's nothing that I. It's, a, it's not a kind of work that I feel like I can just sort of start talking about in a way that, you know, I'm always, I, I've become pretty, you know, I'm off my equilibrium whenever I do talk about it, but because I haven't talked about it in a long time, um, I'm really off my equilibrium, which is not, <laughs> not a bad thing. It's just, you know, uh, it's a, just a jittery kind of thing, but. Well, the level, the level of exposure, the level of kind of yeah. intimacy, it's, been, it's one of the most intimate films I think I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly feel like I know you, which 
Uh, I can't be the only person who feels that way. Uh, you know, so people are coming to you. You've revealed, exposed so much For about sure. yourself, about For your sure. mother, about your relationship. Yes. How, I mean, how do you even manage that? Actually, how how do it's you? A, deal it's a great. It's a <laughs> it's a great question. I mean, we live. You know, we live in we live in an era where you know uh, anybody is searchable. You know, so you so if anybody Google's me. You know, and they read the Wikipedia page that I never even created. There's, you know, out of context and, and, and maybe sometimes even in context, once people actually, you know, after seeing the film, you know, it just depends on how the whatever person is, however the person is hardwired, who's, who's you know, reading it or, or trying to gauge, ingest the information from the film or whatever. But, you know, like when people go to my Wikipedia page, people I've never met before, um, you know, there's a sense of, um, if you don't know anything about the film, you know, like I was saying before, if you don't know anything about the film universe and you sort of see that, you know, it can be a little, um, it can seem a little foreboding and a little sort of like, you know, uncertain in terms of what, what people's interpretation might be. So that's yeah, been a little, it's been a little challenging, but it's, yeah. it's also this thing, um, because the new I'm going to be creating is going to be—it's just going to be this radical departure that I that I've been sort of ready to do for a long time. I can imagine that. I will. I will get. I will. I do want to get to kind of what you're working on now, but I don't want to quite leave uh, that universe that you've oh, yeah, we're, created. We're not going. So there. I teach. I teach your film every every year in a first person film class and every year I teach it in relation to kind of psychic states. And you know, oh, wow. there's a lot of people doing personal filmmaking. There's so many different modes, but the level of kind of not just interiority, but kind of psychological mm -hmm. depth that you achieve in that film. I mean, you basically <clears throat> almost recreate psychosis. You <clears throat> almost kind of bring people in. I mean, that, I, I always look for companion films, you know, the further viewing list. And for that week, I don't have any. Your film is that singular. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, I could put it with, I don't know, Charlotte Ann Robertson's five-year diary where she goes through her own um, sort of devolution. Uh, but actually, your film really is that singular. I mean, did you... Did you have a sense of, I, I know the, the history of the, the background of the making of the film has actually become some kind of legend, right? I mean, that's what people know about it is that you you cut it on, um, so what was it even called back then? I don't remember. I movie, I movie one. I movie. You and, cut and, it on and, I movie one. And derived you didn't know from what very, you doing. yeah, derived from, I, I mean, I had a sense of what I was doing. I just didn't think it was what I was creating was going to um, ever kind of like, explode to the magnitude that it had during that time. It was really, it was essentially this very, very um, private cathartic art project that I'd been working on for, for a long time. And, um, you know, I think at, at best, I thought it would probably uh, at some point, I, I would show it at a place like, uh, there was a place in uh, Brooklyn at the time called uh, Kukuloris, uh, which was this experimental, uh, experimental bar I think uh, a bar where they showed experimental films and I, I mean I just thought at most you know maybe it could be something that could be on in a bar being sort of shown as like almost like a something that almost bordered like mixed media installation art really for the most part and then slowly over the course of time um, uh, it started to, to kind of to, to mutate in, 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 in a really interesting way and, and became the film that it became painstaking. So you didn't know, you didn't know you were making a masterpiece at the time. I... <laughs> not going to touch that one, are you? Well, you know what? I'm not, I don't do the fandom thing really well and I don't usually sort of you know, bubble over about film, but that is really a singular accomplishment. It's such Thank a beautiful you. film. Thank you so much. Um, 
I, you know, I still, I still don't know quite know how one lives with exposing themselves to that extent. But um, I also think that when you say you were watermarked to be a filmmaker, you can see it in Tarnation. You can see the eleven-year-old who's making these phenomenal films as well. I mean, you, your, your trajectory is also inside the film. Yeah, it's, it's weird. The, the whole, I, I really. At some given point in time, and I know I've said this on a number of occasions, what's happening now, like COVID wise, might be a good opportunity to actually at least start starting it. But I'd, I'd like to write a book at some point that's going to sort of break everything that just the whole almost moment by moment um, psychic, con you know, connection thought process that went into making this, along with all of the the technical issues and the film that as it was sort of constantly, I was, I was losing the film over and over again. Um, and there's just, there's so many just sort of weird stories about this sort of magical stories. Um, I don't know how else to, to, I could use other kinds of terms, but it might sound crazy, but there was something almost, <clears throat> Yeah, there was something almost like miraculous. I, I don't want, I, please don't take that in like the wrong, I don't even know what the wrong way would be, but there was something, it's almost like the film was going to happen and needed to happen in the way that it happened, whether I wanted it to or not, if that makes any sense. Amazing. Yeah, so, so it's, a, you know, it's all ab about you, but it was almost without your will that it gets made. It's, it's fascinating. It's, and actually, I would love to read that book because the, fed, you know, the way in which I feel like the way in which people have written about it so much, of, not the scholars, but the sort of reviews so much about yeah. the technical stuff is as if they're avoiding the psychological stuff, the, the, the depth in which it really goes. And I, I mean, I think it would be really interesting to see kind of how, I love the idea that you, you know, you were, you lost the film so many times. I, I can imagine and got lost in it. And, and got lost in it too. You just nailed it. Yeah. And there's, there's so many psychological components to losing the film also. And there's just this, there was this interesting symbiosis between like my, my brain and my experience and, and actually just making, making this and, and, doing it in a very um, idiosyncratic way also. It's it's incredible to me that this, you know, in our, you know, again, in this sort of post YouTube uh, like and subscribe, you know, where everybody's taking a picture of their spaghetti bolognese just, just to let people know that they exist, you know, this really bizarre world that we live in now, which is perpetually incessantly bizarre to me, like every day. It's just like, it never ceases to amaze me. But what does amaze me is this little, this little film that I made on, with these very like idiosyncratic, you know, kind of rinky dinky mom, you know, this mom and pop prosumer, consumer yeah. grade thing is still sort of resonating with people. Well, I mean, it was made in another era, really. I mean, we, we are, we are, you know, this yeah. is how old we are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it really, you know, it was made and consumed in kind of the old fashioned way, as right. it were, yeah. um, through festivals and through kind of screenings and et cetera, et cetera. So um, it wasn't as common, of course, to sort of expose everything about yourself. And I'm still I'm still kind of waiting for I mean, I know we've seen some really interesting YouTube articulations of the personal but i'm still waiting for that sort of you know really creative art project that happens on the mom and pop pro prosumer or consumer you know youtube yeah. manner yeah that does explode it you know it says actually this is a fantastic medium um i know people are using it for you know birthday parties but i'm going to use it to like express something really complicated mm -hmm. and profound yes. and i'm still kind of waiting for that like in this era and maybe it's because i'm not as exposed as some people 20 years younger than me but i yeah. also feel like again i'm going to say it i feel like your effort was really singular and maybe 
maybe it wouldn't have been made in the era where everybody's doing it as it were. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I, well, first off, I wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish my circumstances upon, you know, anyone to, to, to have that kind of thing behind them, to have to make something like this, or, you know, hopefully we'll see something, something heavy, but like maybe not as, you know, I don't know, <laughs> tumultuous. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we'll ever see anything like that. And I'm, I'm, you know, I, feel, I feel very, I feel grateful that to make this film, like it, 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 it encompasses sort of the place, space, and time. Um, but uh, but I'm, gosh, I'm ready to like turn the page, like in this business. But, but you know, yeah, the, it's it's really weird and strange to to make the film and have that, and have the film kind of linger in, in my sort of day to day moment to moment, um, you know, life. Do you watch uh, other people's very personal films or what I'm even calling first person films? I mean, is this a genre or a mode? Uh, of expression that you're interested in yourself? Not really anymore. I, I was at the very beginning, you know, when I was doing this and and I was filming everything a lot of, most of the time, like in general from, you know, when I had my big dinosaur VHS camera to, you know, there was a period where I was carrying around a, a high eight camera, but um, no, I'm, I'm not, it's not it's nothing that I'm interested in any any, any longer. Um, I, I think the rest of the world is sort of everyone's sort of doing it now. So it's not I mean I don't I don't think it's that interesting anymore. But um, also I just I don't have I haven't had a lot of time. Somehow I had time to to do that and kind of, and, and sort of make the film too, somehow. But I don't know if I ever do anything quite like that again. Speaking of, speaking of uh, so, somehow having made the time to make it, or rather, pro probably needing to make that film, have you do you have you read what other people have written, like some of the more scholarly work about your film? There's I one article. Yeah. 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 There's one article in particular I'm thinking of by a psychoanalyst named Adrian Harris who. Um, essentially psychoanalyzes you through the film. This is something that any film scholar would warn against, right? It's a film. Do not, do not, you know, that person yeah. is not on your couch. Do not psychoanalyze right. them. Right. Um, and right. Yes, actually, it's a, it's a super interesting article, but it's like, oh. you know, don't do it. Don't do it. You don't know this person. He made a film. Right. It's not him. This, right. this weird confusion. Right. And, and you, know, you know, it's an 88-minute film that was made over the course of many years and and was and came out and was essentially culled together many years ago it's you know it's it's an 88 minute film that's you know it's an emulation of the truth it's not the truth it's not the actual truth um it is the truth but it's not the truth because you're seeing a very you're seeing a synthesized version of the truth that's being um kind of serenaded by way of music and sound design and very frenetic editing and and all kinds of devices and, and a few reenactments. And um, so you can't, I agree, you can't really psychoanalyze something like that, but yeah. Yeah, danger, danger. <laughs> don't do it. Please don't do that. Please or don't, don't do, it. do it at home. I, I would like to tell my students. <laughs> don't try it at home. Yeah. Or don't don't do try it. this at all. But I also feel that way about your film. Like, don't think that, you know, just because you're making a film by yourself, you're going to make a tarnation. And I really appreciate you saying, of course, you know, the circumstances aren't ones we would wish on you, actually, or anyone. Sure. Um, but to have found the the the, re the filmic resources or the resources in film to negotiate that is stunning. I mean, oh, thank you. I, it, the, really, the film is just it's it's totally miraculous that it even exists, and and I'm so and I'm so grateful that it that it still resonates with people now. I really I I can't believe it actually.
you know. I was it, wondering that. I was it, wondering if you know if you if you ever expected that seventeen years later you'd be asked you'd be called upon to talk about the film and you know that you still get requests. And when I post about it, people are like, "I love that film. Oh, that's an amazing film." Or you know, I mean, it's still going. I'm so, I'm so glad to hear that. And I and I hope it's I hope it's able to 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 still sort of you know help people or give people a sense of hope even in regards to their own circumstances or also just from a logistic standpoint of um, you know it to to inspire you know would be filmmakers that it doesn't I think as long as you have maybe a good possibly compelling story to tell you know it doesn't it, you can do it on an iPhone now iPhone 10. It's true. It's true. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think the, it, the Tarnation stands up. It, you know, I watched it just a few months ago uh, when I was teaching it. I always watch it every year. I like to watch it again. Uh, it stands up. Students <coughs> certainly respond to it. I think I'm sure that it helps people <coughs> kind of me. with their own understanding of their situations. I'm sure of it. I have no. I, 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 I hope so. I hope it does. Do you do you pro, do you project it usually, or do you um, do you guys usually? Or is it well, I mean, when I taught it last term, um, COVID hit had hit, so uh, uh, not Sorry. able to project it. But yeah. you know, yeah, we we try. Yeah. Try. Oh, anyway, I wanna. I, I I don't have a sense of whether there are questions or whether people you know are who are, who might be watching us um, have something they'd like to ask. I think this is being streamed through a variety of me of media. Facebook being one of them. Uh, oh, people okay. are, are watching this in various ways. If people want to make uh, ask questions, they can do so through their through their comments, and we will. Um, I'm happy to. Bring, bring them uh, forward to Jonathan. Um, so far, I haven't seen any, but hopefully some will come. But please do. I mean, we have Jonathan here. He's in Texas. Um, we're basically streaming this live um, London time. Um, and this is an opportunity, actually, to ask Jonathan anything you would like to ask him. Hopefully, well, anyway. This is my yeah, first time. As you want, I guess. Um, this is my first one of these ever doing doing one of these. Actually, this is this is really exciting. Yeah, this live streaming business. Yeah. How how are how what are, are the, you guys? What's that? What are the types of questions that people have asked you in the past? I mean, I'm sure that one question is, "How's your mother?" How's, yeah, she's she's doing fine. You know, it's, it's a it's a day by day, moment by moment thing. Um, I, wherever I go, she goes, because I'm, I'm kind of her sole advocate for the most part. Um, she, I just recently migrated her down to Texas when I came down here, um, just, just before COVID happened, because my initial plan was to, to reclaim my childhood home where I'm at now. This is where Tarnation was mostly this is the house I grew up in and in the house where uh, my mother also grew up in. And so I recently migrated, migrated her down here and um, was, was able to help her get her own apartment and I'm getting her set up with an infrastructure um, of, you know, safe things around her so that she can, you know, be, be happy and, and, you know, have a sense of independence also, but still, you know, um, stay well as much as she can, but she's doing good. She's doing good. We do have one question oh. that just came in from someone named Julie Wagner, oh. <clears throat> who asks, do you feel differently towards the footage that didn't make the cut and remains private compared to how you feel towards the footage that did end up in the, in the final film? Hmm. Oh, that's a very, that's a very interesting, um, Question. Some of the some of the footage that didn't end up in the cut of Tarnation did end up uh, by a whole other sort of set of strange circumstances in this kind of um, other sort of follow up film that I made for for Tarnation to Tarnation called Walk Away Renee. So a lot of what was B roll uh, for Tarnation ended up in that. 
And um, I have my own thoughts about that second film. Um, that it, it's a very complicated film for me for a bunch of reasons, but um, there, a, there are circumstances that had happened that I wish I had filmed or, or wish there was, you know, some kind of documentation for it, but no, but I'm, you know, I, I'm ha I, I feel good about Tarnation. I feel good about the film. I, I feel, I, I don't know what, I don't know if I'm answering the question at all, but, um, I, I, um, I wish there, I wish there, actually there, there were, there were a ton of VHS tapes that got lost somewhere. And I, I still, you know, I used to do these weird things. I still, maybe they're not lost because I used to do these weird things when I was a kid where I had a Betamax tape uh, or a VHS tape and it would be, it would be like a, it would be like a, you know, like a commercial, like it would be Popeye on VHS or something. And then I would create these weird little time capsules where I would fast forward on the VHS tape and then I would put, and the way you recorded over commercially grade VHS tapes, if you wanted to erase it, I, I don't even know if my, this language even, if people are even understanding what I'm saying right I now. I understand you, but I, I do feel <laughs> that there is. This is 2020, they, they probably don't even know what erase and tape over. What is um, VHS, what is beta? But anyway, I would create, how do I say this in a 2020? I, I would create Easter eggs on content in the middle of the content and then somehow do this thing in my brain where I forgot where the Easter egg was or where the time capsule was. And I would do these, I would, I did several of these sort of like characters and these weird wow. makeshift performances of different people I was sort of making up on the fly here in, the, in this house when I was nine, 10, 11. And I, I'm hoping they still exist, but I, I've yet to, I've yet to find it hopefully, but um, Fascinating. I, don't, I don't think that answered the question right, but maybe that gives some semblance of information. I love that you came up with Easter egg for this, for this. That was good. That was very good. It's probably better than, maybe more, uh, better than time capsule. Maybe, maybe that means something. Easter egg. I, I think all the DVD, you know, special, <laughs> yeah. whatever people are, are right there with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Robert Wilkinson <laughs> yeah. is asking, um, what is your go-to movie that you like to return to again and again? And do you have a favorite director? Oh God, that's a, that's a fun question. Um, it's actually this film right there. Three women by Robert Altman. <laughs> it's one of my favorite all time favorite movies. And i and I love turning people onto it. And I, love, if, if I can find people that have a lot of extra time and bandwidth, I'm happy to watch all three of these films in succession, just to introduce them to actually all three of these films, Persona by Ingmar Bergman, Three Women by Robert Altman, and then um, uh, Mulholland Drive by David Lynch, because I think all three of them are sort of like remakes of each other to some weird, ex to even on a subconscious level, I think. Um, all the, you know, Robert Altman was, I think it, I think it all kind of goes back to Bergman, but, um, I love <clears throat> that's three women is probably has probably been my number one top favorite film for probably I uh, twenty years or something like that and um, it's a film I I revisit a lot and um, yeah I I have to say I love um, I'm pretty I'm pretty privy towards David Lynch I I'm I've been a huge devotee. Of his work for a long time, and uh, uh, and Gus Van Sant um, as well. I really, I was extremely inspired by by his films growing up too. I mean, there's so many, there's so many. Like, it's so hard to choose just one. You know, John Cassavetes, Alejandro Jodorowsky, um, Todd Haynes. I really, I like Todd Haynes' films. Well, I'm with you on pretty much all of the films you mentioned. Um, maybe not Bergman, but um, 
we're we're being told that it's almost time to wrap up, and I had promised to, oh. to ask you about your current project, which now it looks like we're only going to have about thirty seconds to oh. talk about. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm calling it. <clears throat> it's called Solastalgia, and it's uh, it's a thing I've been writing since uh, 2012. And there's a part one and a part two, and there's. Um, you know, if in a perfect world, if if, um, if the world allows me to do it, and, and we're all still here, um, I'm hoping to make um, a multitude of episodes, and it's going to be it's going to be a hybrid podcast that's going to have a, a very a very integral video component uh, that's really going to feel pretty cinematic. So tell so us where we can where we can find where we can go to find out more. That's all we got. The first time anything like this because I'm such a leather and I can barely on Facebook. But you can follow me on Instagram, which I just created, and Facebook at Solastalgia Podcast. So it's S O L A S T A L G I A Podcast. And also, um, free updates you can. Um, if, if anybody wants to be a part of like bigger things coming up in the future for Carnation, which uh, is interesting Carnation stuff, I don't want to say what it is right away, but um, you can actually, if, it, if people are comfortable with this, they can email their name and phone number even to solastalgiapodcast at gmail.com. Fantastic. I'm going to do that when we get off. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jonathan. It's been Absolute pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure talking with you too. Thank you so much for this. I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Take care. Take, take care, you too.